Hi friends, welcome to another video. My name is Jan and on this channel I recommend LGBTQ fiction. I'm quite kind of relaxed and laid back in my chair today. I don't know why, I'm just, you know, chilling out. Um, today I thought I would just film a video um, recommending a classic. I think it's been a while since I kind of, um, that I uh, did a video like this. So um, every so often I will read a book that is considered a classic by other people or that I consider to be a classic. And I'll add it to my little playlist of LGBTQ classics. I'll drop a link to that somewhere so you can go see the other videos. But um, the the book that I want to talk about today is a book called Dancer from the Dance by Andrew Holleran. Now, if I've remembered correctly, Eric Garber is the author's real name, if I've remembered that right. Um, and Andrew Holleran is a pseudonym. And he published it in 1978. It is considered a cult classic. And I've definitely heard it referred to as a kind of gay Great Gatsby in that it's really kind of, oh, it just kind of sums up the time that it was set in. It really kind of um, is a perfect example of a particular group of people at a particular time in a particular place. And I think that kind of period, so it's set in New York around the um, gay clubs of New York and in the gay scene in New York in the 70s and oh, it's sort of late 60s, early 70s it's set. I think that time period could be romanticised a little bit by people because um, it was a time of great freedom, a time of uh, great choice, um, because it was a time before AIDS. I mean, this book is set kind of um, before there's even kind of a hint of it, or maybe it's this sort of dark shadow kind of looming in the distance that people don't really know is about to happen. So it's a really interesting book from that perspective. It is a very short book, but I would recommend that you read it slowly because there is a lot in there. There's a lot of layers. At times it did kind of feel a little bit like I was just reading a list of conquests um, and the things that men do to each other, because that is what, what the book is about. Um, but there's a lot of um, allusions to um, other works of literature and to other aspects of culture from the time. So it is kind of worth kind of taking your time and reading it a bit slowly. So the plot, which I should have said to begin with, it centers around someone called Malone. And he, the blurb on the back of the copy that I had referred to it as a coming of age novel. And I really don't think it is. Now his age is not really mentioned. I think at one point I was trying to work it out. And at one point it mentions that he's in his thirties, sort of mid thirties, late thirties. So I think that it's definitely not a coming of age novel, like I wouldn't say, but it's about Malone and he moves to New York and he gets kind of involved in the gay scene and then he is trying to find love. That's what he really wants, is to find someone to love him. And he's very handsome, lots of people love him, or well, lots of people want to sleep with him rather, um, and he sleeps with a lot of people. And then he meets Sutherland. So Sutherland is this kind of uh, really kind of over the top stereotypical, quintessentially uh, massively camp man who then pimps Malone out uh, to the men that he wants to sleep with him anyway so they try to make a bit of money out of it. Um, so that's the kind of dynamics of the story. I've read lots of um, sort of reviews and um, articles about the book and a lot of people mentioned the unnamed narrator. Now I've got a bit of a weird kind of left field theory about this so this, this is my take on it so this is, this is what I think. So in the book there is this unnamed narrator who knows everything that goes on. So whilst he's uh, the narrator is presented as, as a man who is part of this scene, who who also idolises Malone, who was also very attracted to him and wants to sleep with him, but I don't think does at any point. I read the narrator as being the city. So for me, the narrator of Dancer from the Dance is the city itself. Now I know this might seem crazy, so come with me on this crazy journey. So the city itself is in love with the queer scene. The queer scene and the city are kind of part of e each other. They're kind of interchangeable with each other. Um, the city loves Malone as much as Malone loves the city, but the city is also following him like a weird stalker everywhere he goes. And you can't seem to get away from this sort of smothering, suffocating, um, overbearingness that the city has on him and he kind of wants to get away from that but he can't seem to get away from that. The city wants to keep Malone close, it wants to kind of uh, to embrace him, it wants to touch him, it wants to be with him always, it wants to know who his friends are, it kind of wants to be be with him at all times and in the same way that a lot of men kind of want to gravitate towards Malone so it almost feels like the narrator is all of these men who want to sleep with Malone. The narrator is 
the gay scene. The narrator is the city itself that is trying to kind of to hold him there and to kind of keep him there. And the whole time what Malone is doing is he's kind of he's drifting through these different scenes. So the narrator kind of sees him at various different places, but the narrator also knows what's going on in his head. The narrator is also there, very kind of private conversations between Malone and Sutherland. The narrator kind of sees all, is omnipresent and knows everything. But the narrator is also detached from Malone, whilst also knowing exactly what's going on in his head, the narrator is also completely detached from him. So it's almost it parallels exactly the same way that Malone starts to feel detached from the city. You know, he wants to be part of this gay scene, but he wants to be part of that scene because he wants to find someone to fall in love with. He's got this desperation throughout that he just wants to meet someone to fall in love with, but all he keeps doing is meeting men and boys to have sex with. It doesn't really bring him any love and it doesn't really bring him any comfort. And ultimately, um, the novel is really kind of about that conflict between wanting to be part of that scene but also not wanting to be part of that wanting to be part of something bigger wanting to be more but actually feeling drawn to and feeling attached to the city and that's why I think the narrator is actually uh, a symbol of the city as a whole um, also like the queer part of the city that is kind of keeping Malone drawn in and that is what I love about I loved about reading the book is whilst it does sometimes feel like you are just reading um, really long descriptions about and then we met this person and then there was this person and then they're like this and then they do this and this person does this to that person and it does go on like that um quite repetitively it's almost kind of hypnotic in a way it kind of draws you in in the same way that the city does the same way that the city draws Merlone in the same way that the city draws all these men in the the way that the book is structured and the way that the book is narrated does exactly the same thing and that's why I think it's just such um, an, an amazing book and I think it's deservedly a classic I don't think it would be to everybody's taste I think um if you don't like graphic descriptions I mean it's not that graphic it's quite blunt it's not like long descriptions of sex, it's just quite blunt about what people do with each other. If that's not your thing, you might not like this. I'm not saying it's to everyone's taste, but I think it is definitely a classic and it is definitely worth reading. So I'd really like to know if you have read Dancer from the Dance, what you thought of it, what you think of my crazy theory about the, the omnipresent narrator. Um, all of these things, do drop a, um, a comment below and let me know, um, or come and find me on Twitter. And until next time, thanks for watching.